Welcome everybody, it is Friday time and this is the LF, which stands for... Sing the song, motherfucker! Oh shit, I didn't get the memo. It's Tearless Friday, everybody, and we are back with Melee in Mythic Plus, which has been a while hmm. since last we checked it. It's been a month. Um, and I know you still wait for those tanks and healers, but they will come. But right now, things have shaken up a little bit in the meta now that everybody Crazy. has the four piece and the double legendaries. <laughs> yeah, and they're kicking it. Just a quick disclaimer, we're currently looking at, let's say, the overall performance of everybody, but judging by how their score is kind of distributed, so it's a little bit arbitrary, but not 100% arbitrary, because this week sees like a lot of specs doing really good. And if you really must know, if we were going to judge everything basically on performance, it would be probably S, A, and B tier. Everybody's doing amazing. Yeah, yeah. also all specs can do a lot of big keys. That's like no, no question about it. Uh, and also another disclaimer, we're not necessarily ranking them by the pure damage that they do, but mostly it is the damage, but also combined with the level of keys they do as well. So yeah. do take that in mind. If you're gonna see a spec in C or D tier, it's not because it doesn't do enough damage, it's because it's more ranked of the damage plus the highest and lowest keys uh, these specs done. Yeah, for sure, that, for sure. That, that's clear enough. But listen, if you wanna do Mythic Plus, and you wanna see everything clearly and have like a lot of add-ons that can help you, and man, listen, you have to use CurseForge for all of those beautiful add-ons you use in Mythic Plus. And listen, you can download the app from the description. You also have the, the link over there with all of our add-ons. And if you use CurseForge, it's basically an easy way to just manage all of your add-ons, get, you know, get them updated and stuff. Plus the platform has been going through like weekly fixes and quality of life changes. At, at, at this point, it's super stable. I don't think there was ever, ever a problem, but just the sheer fact that it's been updated on a weekly basis. Plus it does a tremendous this job on helping out the add-on creators as well. I Hell mean, yeah. it's a no-brainer, man. You have to use Curse Forge for all of your add-ons. We use it all it's the good. time. It's like uh, the, the the best for us. There's, there's no denying that. Check the link in the description and thank you, Curse Forge, for keeping the flag up for Marcellian mm. Online. Now, let's so. get into it. Starting it off with Arms Warrior. I have to say, man. <clears throat> Arms Warrior is a very great spec and a very potent spec in dungeons. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, it's, that, that's uh, a very fat disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the 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 fact that you don't see a lot of Arms Warrior pushing like the biggest key so far, it's more of a symptom of Fury being very, very good as well. But that doesn't mean Arms Warrior's mains are not killing it. I mean, uh, Thorgrim, if you know, our boy Thorgrim is still one of the highest, if not the highest. I think highest. it's a rank two arms in, uh, in the world. Uh, yeah, in and still pumping like a super big keys in terms of like how we're gonna rank it right now um damage is good the highest key i don't know which was it was um, i think somewhere arms at of... least this week depending on when you watch this the highest arms has done is maybe a 24 but it's not the highest any arms has done ever it's just because no, just of the combination this, yeah. of affixes and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah um it's every like like i mentioned guys everything is pretty decent and if we were to just judge by performance we would only have like three tiers but that's boring so we just try to like spread them out as much as possible from best to worst and unfortunately yeah it's d tier arms, uh, bites the bullet into it's d -tier. the d tier it's it, it's d tier but let's take a look at Assassination Rogue, which has received a little bit of buffs this week for its AOE damage, but once again, <laughs> this doesn't really... So, this is the thing, right? The data we have here uh, is basically like for, for the last week. It, not everything got uh, clipped within the, all of the changes and buffs to certain specs or nerfs to others, okay? So, some of uh, some of the logs, some of the data will contain the changes, some of them will not. Uh, well, it's likely that, that, that uh, with all the buffs that the people haven't had the chance to actually push all the Keys. Exactly. I would imagine yeah. uh, by the nature of the season that we're in, people probably start with raiding first to hopefully get that extra tier piece or that of extra course. shrinking and then start pushing yeah. keys. Some yeah. people uh, some people do that. So yeah. it's likely that that's probably what's holding Assassination back currently in D tier uh, right D -tier, there next, yeah. next to ARMS. I think it's a little bit better than it's ARMS. I think actually, it's one it, key it depends, or two. Old. It actually depends on uh, where you look because yeah. uh, Warcraft Vlogs can put it ahead, Subcreation behind, Raider IO ahead. So it's 
It's like back and forth. They're very yeah. close, though. Very, 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 very close. I mean, the struggles of Assassination Rogue uh, and Mythic Plus are real, uh, as opposed to the, the other two specs uh, from the Rogue. Assassination actually kind of requires a little bit of momentum, a little bit of build up and maintaining. So it's not like, I wouldn't say the easiest, but not the smoothest spec to play in Mythic Plus and push high keys, as opposed to like, let's say, sub Rogue, right? So this is why, in terms of like it's the competition within the class, you're always going to have that sub who's just there you know we're gonna get to it eventually king. but sadly king. yeah sadly okay as an enhancement shaman i think oh. we were talking about a first winner here definitely because an enhancement has been like you know the the biggest i would say surprise of patch 9.2 with the, all of the changes and buffs and stuff so he's doing good in the raid he's doing do good in mythic plus enhancement is a beast I just picked it up myself this week as well, and it's fucking amazing. It's oh, yeah. basically <laughs> what uh, myself and probably every other enhancement has been wishing since beta, when the new talent changes and the new rework for the enhancement has been announced. Right now, enhancement is in B tier. However, I expect it to be A tier within a couple of weeks because there are one or two exceptions, like one or two really good enhancement shamans that are pushing keys all the way up to the uh, top 10 in the world. Yeah. Top 10 highest keys ever, not just top 10 enhancement. Um, but I, I, we cannot just judge a whole spec by the performance of like two or three players, which is why it's in B tier, but you will probably see Enhancement doing some of the highest keys in the oh, game for sure. in the hands of a competent player. So Enhancement is doing really well with the changes to Hot Hands and Flame Shock and Lava Lash. Now that's primarily what, what you're probably going to be playing in Mythic Plus with the Primal Lava Actuators. You have so many tools so and many. so fun. The rotation... Too goddamn many tools. This is how you what do you a do? rotation where everything has a short cooldown. There's no one bun that doesn't have a cooldown. I don't think, unless it's like Healing Stream Tournament, in which case, what? No, that actually has a cooldown too. Fuck it! But this is complete. It feels, it feels rewarding, it feels satisfying. Pick it up, you'll have a blast. No, enough, enough geeking out, man. Let's talk about Pussycats, Feral Druids, who have been buffed once again, but they kind of retained their position since last month, because um, again, when we're talking about Feral Druids, sure, they, they have now like a little bit more prominent prominent position in AoE damage, but I do believe last week was, uh, was it, the, not Tyrannical, was it Tyrannical? Uh, it, was, it was Tyrannical. Tyrannical, yeah. yeah. And, in terms of like the AOE, you kind of see the, the more presence in AOE when, when you have fortified. On Tyrannical, specs like Feral Druid could shine, especially with that single target burst on, you know, the, the, the big bosses. But there's still like in super high keys, the pools are very big, so you still have to deliver on that. Feral Druid is still like a very fun spec to play, much more, I would, I would compare it to Assassination Rogue in a sense in keys where you do have to like still maintain some of your bleeds and stuff, but it's not as, I would say, tedious. It's more smooth, it's more fun, much more mobile. So for now, Feral Druid, as much as uh, a lot of people have expected it to be shit, it's not that shit, it's C tier, right? I'm I'm ch I'm I'm checking I'm checking uh, uh, with with the, our data analyst here and it's yes definitely C tier here. It is it's, it is. I, I mean okay. Uh, I, I don't know if this will change. I'm, I don't think this will change uh, in the, the very near future. The but, buffs. But this is way better than how Feral was in Keys, let's say, in, in Nathria and even 9.1. Okay, so this is definitely an improvement, guys. Well, the thing is, the the floor has been raised for everybody with the tier sets and with everything that the change. So everybody does way higher Keys than normal. So Feral is doing way higher Keys than normal. There's still a difference between Feral and the top. So I would expect oh, yeah. much heavier buffs because the buffs that it got, what is it? Wow. One or two weeks ago was okay. Not, it was okay. It's you know it was, it was okay, like but four to seven percent AOE. That's not that much. So I would expect a lot more buffs to Feral as well, because uh, uh, pussy cats need to return. Pussy cats cannot be. Cool, yes, they are cool, but you know what else is cool? The Frost Dead Knight, baby, which is another <laughs> fucking winner. And we talked about it in our podcast. You know, Frost DK has to be like. One of the most funnest melee specs right now. Funnest? Funniest? Funnest. The, the, funniest? The, the most. The most. Is it funny, man? It's, is it's, it? I laugh sometimes. What? <laughs> what, what? But I mean, uh, Frost yeah, DK Frost, is uh, yeah. is doing very good. It's taking the place of Unholy definitely in the in the oh, yeah. the what DK DPS should you play if you want to have the what? <laughs> it's doing it's doing surprisingly well. It's up there with enhancement. It's very oh, difficult yeah. to kind of rank because. Um, oh, they're very Muffin, close. Muffin Cookie is a fucking god. He's like yeah. a, a whole other level above everybody else. For sure, he's, yeah. he's doing a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to pulling a Frost DK up on the in the rankings. Yeah, man. He's responsible um, for all of this. But uh, overall, Frost is doing uh, decently. It's 
it's a very particularly difficult melee spec to play since you kind of really rely on your tank knowing how breath works because if you have to move a lot and I would imagine it would have been higher if it wasn't for Spiteful last week because I can see Spiteful being a bitch oh, for, yeah, for, sure. for Frost. For you, sure. you cannot you cannot stop hitting your target otherwise your breath falls off and then you're like nothing you're just like a naked spec no no it's it, it's good there's no denying you know the frosty case got like super nice tier set bonus and it, it shows in the red and the mythic plus as well very i would say deserved place as frosty k did struggle long in time the past coming, long time uh, mythic plus so beautiful now one king to be made supreme fury warrior Ooh, we're talking about baby. arms fury. now yeah arms arms kind of, the arms mains a lot of them kind of switched to fury this season why is that flame well can you tell the probably people why? because fury is just outperforming arms in pretty much every aspect of the game so far it's i mean we i think we had it s tier last time or something very high uh, it was it was it was still high it was still it was, was still it was, high it was very high it's it's doing really good it's one of the best melees in the game As right we now, predicted. yeah, yeah, it's currently all the way up into eight tier. The There's first a eight tier spec, baby. It's it's it was it would have been so close to be S tier, but there's a reason why it's not S tier. Uh, Fury is solid. It's just freaking solid, man. It's it works really well. The legendaries and I'm sorry, the tier set actually changes your talents as well. You can play Reckless Abandon. You have Kirin with an explosive AOE burst. Jesus Christ, you're gonna meld those packs with the, with the Unity and Elysian Might. Clearly, it's it works just no, fucking it, fantastic. With especially with the Merciless Bone Grinder, you're just gonna like whirlwind all over the place. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean Fury was always one of the, the smoothest specs in the game and fast paced specs in the game. And now with the tier set and double Legos and and, and stuff, I mean one of one of its main points was AOE and Cleave, which was kind of in the past taken by Warrior in terms of value, but right now the, the, the numbers are just insane and you can see Fury Warriors all across the board. Even if, even if you look at the Mythic plus Hall of Fame, you're going to see all of all of the Warriors being, being Fury. So I would say well-deserved once again, really fun spec to play. We predicted yep. this, by the way, so uh, happy we got it right. Next up on the list, the famous Brainiac <laughs> class in spec, Havoc Demon Hunter. Havoc. No, I kid the Demon Hunters. I, I, I know it is. It's, it's, it's a bad Hav stigma. Havoc was, uh, was an actual surprise because uh, it's famous for having a pretty uh, subpar tier set, tier bonus. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of Havocs have been complaining. Mostly, I, th I believe mostly because it's boring. I, I can probably confirm that maybe it doesn't bring the most amount of power like it does for other specs, like probably for Frost yeah, DK. But, but the, 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 the one that reduces the metamorphosis, right? That was the four That's pieces. the one, and I think the first one is Blade Dance uh, Just does, increased damage, uh, right? does more damage. <laughs> it's it's boring, I mean, come on, it's, yeah, but it's uh, however, the, the floor, uh, again, talking about the floor, yeah, but there's a lot of floor um, here. It's very floor. high for Havoc. Whoa. I mean, uh, my Whoa, Havoc is in s severely undergeared and I'm doing way more damage than I would be doing on, let's say, I don't know, my arms or Fury or it's kind of debatable of whether or not I do more damage than on Fury. But Havoc has a lot of potential for crazy high AOE damage, especially if you yeah, run and it's into- it's super consistent as well. I mean, yeah. they, they, can, they can maintain that damage, no problem. Or one the, of the- The cool part is that you have with Unbound Chaos or Glaive Tempest, you have really short AOE bursts. Unbound Chaos is really basically cool, yeah. uncapped AOE. Crazy, especially with Ur, you keep getting access to pretty much everything that you have. It's a really oh, yeah. good spec. It's but this it was, is yeah, this is one of the specs that actually made it up. I think last time it was either on B or, or C tier, and now it's it's uh, uh, rolled it's all the way really up to high, A tier. It's really high next to Fury, which is yeah, which is really 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 cool. Uh, okay, now this this next one, I'm always surprised to see Outlaws in here. And uh, by, by the way, the, pirate. the bugs are still not fixed. Uh, regardless, we, I guess everybody can remember all of the years that Outlaw Rogues dominated the Mythic Plus scene. They were like kind of the gods of AOE BFA and Cleave. Shall not be forgotten. Uh, but not even even in, in uh, Legion and, and Shadowlands at the beginning. I mean, in Shadowlands, at the, the, I think the first season, yeah, in Castle Nathry season, Sub Rogue was no. Uh, assassination <laughs> was uh, decent, but in Keys, no. So you had Outlaw, which no. was dominant all the Just way. No. Um, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but well, I do know what happened. Is basically Subbro got uh, you know got a lot of love, and uh, rightfully so. But Outlaw, um, as its rotation is basically the same in AOE as in single target, and it's still filled with a couple of bugs in. Um, just the pure numbers and the keys that have been done in comparison to the other specs are not there. Not saying that Outlaw is doing shit damage, not not by a long shot, oh, but no. uh, it's basically I think like the the best 
just in the D tier. So it does better it's, than... It's close. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't see if it does way better than Assassination. Maybe a little bit. Some of the uh, Outlaw players have done, let's say, one or two keys higher than, uh, than Assassination. So it's not a not a big difference. But overall, they're, they're under a very, very large shadow, which we will get to in a second. But first... <laughs> but first, a message from our sponsors. Red Paladin, have you ever wanted to be a warrior and also help others? Not being mobile, having a pony to ride around and having a lot of good burst and good AoE. Well, here is Red Paladin for you, baby, and I love it. Red Paladins are doing amazingly well. They're not like in, compa in comparison to the, to the S and A tier specs. Okay, that's fine. But if you have a Red Paladin in your group, on top of delivering very, very potent AOE damage and single target damage, da damage, damage, da single target damage, 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 you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? I also love playing a red paladin and seeing a good red paladin in the group because it helps so much. People don't, people don't really um, appreciate or underestimate the presence of a red paladin. So oh yeah, a I good actually... paladin could like dispel poisons and stuff from your tank for your repeat help a healer out with, uh, you know with the spells. You know yeah, that plague plague fall. Fall, baby. Remember, be a good red paladin. They can free them people that need, need that shit. They can bop uh, also people. They can lay on hands their tanks when they don't have <laughs> necrotic stacks as well. They can taunt and bubble to save the dead. So listen, I know a lot of people want to are interested in just, oh, how was the damage? How was the damage? How was the damage? The damage is very, very good. And granted, I'm 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 sure that in a week's time from, from now, Red Paladins really will bump even further. They have been bumped a bit because they're still in C tier, but like closing up the gap. Because I remember last time we we put them on the, the back of the C tier because uh, obviously there were no tier sets and the, there were no the Red Paladin was very Legos. close to uh, making it all the way to B tier. Um, there are some Red Paladins that are really pushing really good keys. 27 However, was the uh, highest maybe? Or? Uh, I don't actually don't know for, yeah. for Red, uh, Red Paladin. However, um, they're very close to Frost Decays. It's just that there's clearly a little yeah. difference. Um, yeah, I feel is. like if we had like all the way to F tier, Red Paladin would have been a tier above Feral. Oh, and everybody else that's... No, for uh, for sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, again, buffs have been uh, uh, introduced to Red Paladin's AoE, so you're going to definitely see it a lot more next week. But that being said, um, I guess uh, the big surprise... What the fuck, man? I mean, really, this is a shocker. Sub broke. Oh, my God. Hold on. Ho hold me. Hold me. It's a nest here. Give me a beer, man. <laughs> let, me, let me hold it. I mean, was it a surprise? It's, it's, was it a surprise? Well, I mean, I, the, the fact that Sub was shit for an entire expansion kind of makes me okay with of it. Of course, man. Although yeah. consistently being uh, S tier every season. It gets annoying might, a bit. Might, might be annoying <laughs> for some other specs. Um, I actually think it's it's cool. It deserves its time in the in the spotlight. I just hope Blizzard doesn't hammer it down at the end of the expansion as like kind of yeah, sometimes kind of, they do. Yeah. Um, but I think it's no surprise. Uh, yeah. Sub is the melee you want if you're going to be pushing the highest of keys of in course. the game. Since right now the meta kind of is two casters, one melee. So that melee usually is I mean, your sub rogue yeah so of, of course you're gonna have the the rogue utility with the shroud with the blinds you know with, with the whole of the the cc and 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 uh sub rogue has access to a lot of potent cc and fast through shadow dance and multiple stuns and stuff but not only that sub rogue is still like the the dominant king of funnel damage it deals great aoe damage decent Cleave, once again, with, with the tier sets now and double Legos, it's much more easier to pull off decent cleave. Not the best cleave, but boy, does it compensate in single target and massive AoE. All right. Plus, as I've said, the, uh, the rogue utility, there's no denying. There's, there's no like, um, uh, why would sub rogue be in S tier as a melee? Well, it has kind of everything going for it. So I would say yeah, we keep sub, it there for sub a while. Is, uh, sub is in S tier and not because it's like, leagues ahead of Fury and Havoc is just because uh, the tops, uh, the top keys are just done with Havoc and that's just True. gotta sh gotta show that love, gotta show that love it's, it's there it's speaking, speaking of showing some love the year of the spear uh, it's happening, survival it's happening. hunter we, I mean come on, we were expecting this you know, the yeah, mad bomber, the mad bomber baby the bad bomber, the bomb, bomb with the, with the, four, with the four piece, uh, I think last time we had it around C tier, five, it was, it was lower yeah, but now, yeah, way lower, now yeah. with everything uh, survival is very high it's up, up there, it's in A tier A tier Again, baby uh, some of the specs in the, eight, I mean actually all the specs in the A tier can be interchangeable, it depends exactly on what people want or need I'm seeing like one or two uh, survivals in the top 10 keys cleared as well so that's so it's there again but just because there's like one or two really good people doesn't mean that 
uh, those are gonna carry the entire spec, which is probably why it's an A tier, but it might as well. I, I wouldn't be surprised, although that would be an interesting turn of events to see uh, Survival take the role of sub into S here in a couple of months. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see, well, I guess we'll have to see um, how the balance will, will roll out. Nobody's uh, surprised right now. Tier said double legendary survival is just uh, smashing no, an AoE. Yeah, AoE. The, there was no denying, man. One of the biggest uh, and most competitive damage you can ever have from a melee spec in terms of AoE and cleave. That is survival. Hell I'm yeah. not sure how it delivers on on on, on weeks like uh, tyrannical, where you know it kind of needs more single target damage prowess. But I'm not. I mean, uh, it's uh, not the worst. It's but the better. It, it's shine is in AoE for sure. So the, the single the target has been. Want. Uh, indirectly buff because your single target damage ability is also your AOE damage ability, kind of. Similar um, to Outlaw. So, yeah. So, it's it's okay. It's okay in single target. Maybe that's why we don't see it into S tier. And I think that's fine because if you have something that's good at everything, it's going to be a little bit weird. Then everybody's going to play it. So, it's yep. fine to have a niche. Um, just like Sub uh, has that the funnel niche and the large AOE and the single target work. Leave it kind of... kind of. It's decent now. It's not bad as it used to be. But, yeah. okay. Unholy DK, another Fallen King from the past but not that um, bad I guess I That's, think mm. well I think it's actually a little bit better than last time right now it's in C tier it's uh, between Feral and Red in terms oh, of overall okay. performance and I'm only saying this because I think last time we had it all the way down into D tier it was yeah it was and yeah. I, I guess it depends on where you look because Subcreation has it all the way down into D tier and like 80% of the melee is in A and B tier yeah um, <laughs> but Unholy is slightly better I guess we'll have to see I still think that Unholy is uh, similar to Feral deserving a few more buffs when it comes to its overall performance. It's not getting as much out of the tier set as other specs is, are in this case. So we'll, we'll just have to see. It's, it's still a good DPS. I mean, you know, you have all that uh, DK utility. It's really fun to play in keys when you have to rotate cooldowns all the time. It's actually maybe yep. a little bit more fun in keys than it is in raids. Probably, because you have access to cooldowns much more often, right? Then yeah, it's, it's, it's very... Plus um, with R, it's, it's a little bit crazy. So yep. plus I've, I've, I've seen like some top on Holy Decay's really messing the DPS meter, so... Uh, I can I cannot totally understand it. I'm curious how many of these DKs that, that actually log and then we get data from right now have the, the, the gavel of the first ones, you know, the... the that's a, that's a very good question. Um, uh, yeah. From Mythic, I would doubt. No, 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 not Mythic. It. Heroic or something like um, that. Because I know that that weapon is very... I know it's valuable for most of the, the two-hander melee uh, heroes in the Mythic Plus. Heroes, they said. <laughs> <laughs> but from from what I get, uh, Unholy really benefits from that shit a lot. So we'll, we'll have to see. We'll, Probably, we'll see. Yeah, Maybe properties will change in, in a couple of weeks if a lot more DKs get, get their hands on that shit. On that shit. On the sh on the sh sh All right. Now, another Fallen King. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Windwalker yeah, Monk. This, this was a uh, surprise. I, I um, wouldn't have expected it, but I mean, it, it's bound to happen when you have other specs kind of move up the ranks, right? So, I mean... I mean, it had its time in the spotlights. Uh, For sure. This is kind of how maybe a top uh, meta spec should behave. Like every now and again, it drops a season or two. Right now it's in B tier. It was kind of difficult to decide if it's going to be A tier or B tier, but there's a little bit of a difference. Wow. Similar to survival, is there, there are a couple of really good uh, Windwalkers there that are clearing like the 27s and 28s and all of that good stuff. Uh, but there's all the, like very few of them. The, the majority of the Windwalkers are smidging into like B tier. So that's kind of where they are right now, probably after all of those nerfs. Uh, although th it did receive uh, buffs, was it this reset with uh, Rising uh, Sun Kick having yeah, more yeah, damage? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're addressing the single target damage even yeah. even more uh, for Windwalkers. It's it's kind of like that thing where um, I think for, for the last two, two patches, Windwalker bugs would do like stupid amounts of AoE damage. Um, <laughs> they still do <laughs> stupid yeah, amounts of AoE damage. Not denying that, but when it came to like weeks like this one that we had currently, like, you know, the tyrannical and have to you know, funnel a lot, a lot of damage through a, a single target boss. I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but definitely with these changes, it might come back once that's, again. That's the thing, so, because uh, the single target buffs came after the tyrannical week, so we don't we yep. don't have enough data yep. to actually showcase how good these buffs yep. treat Windwalker. And even if they do, like, everybody's getting so much good stuff these days, and, like, mm -hmm. every week there's at least one or two specs that's being addressed. Yep. Either if it's, like, oppressingly uh, overpowered, it's going to be tuned down a little bit. And even the nerfs are not that bad right yep. now. 
I mean, I think they stopped <laughs> chopping down all the way to the bone since they nerfed Feral so bad. Yeah, that's, that's you know, they, <laughs> they have to learn their lesson at some point, right? So it's, it's uh, at the end of the day, when you look at it right now, this is, this is why we're kind of going back and forth for ranged and, and raids and mythic plus and melees and raids. <clears throat> melees and mythic plus and raids because they're kind of like addressing a lot of uh things within these specs on a weekly ba basis and um uh we're still in that period where not a lot of people cleared let's say heroic jailer and a lot of these specs will need and will change when they get that gavel of the first ones that's one thing up until this point a lot of these specs didn't, didn't have like two sets or four sets right that also changed a lot of the position here. Add on top of that, the fact that on a weekly basis, they're tuning and changing abilities and tier sets and whatnot. This is why we keep going back and forth with these because it's very cool for us. At least it's very nice to geek out on yeah, how, it's, how the placements are changing on a weekly basis. Right I think up it's, until it's a good representation of how the game keeps changing as the season just gets on, on its yep, way. Yep. And it's kind of balanced. And I do want to point out that all of these specs if for whatever it's worth have uh, players that have uh, peaked over 3000 score uh, mythic plus score so all oh, yeah. of these specs are good i mean uh, the highest i think uh, sub the highest sub is close to 3.6k i think wow uh and uh the highest arms i think is around 3.1 or 3.2k no, so there you so go so it's you, still it's still very high yeah it's it's, and it's a very good example you see sub on the, the very front front top of the top and then you see arms at the very bottom but the difference in reality on how these mains right play is not that big right so you can still get 3.1k rating as an arms warrior no problem and do massive amounts of damage i mean 3k is really the the the, the most amount you will ever want for all of those for sure uh, 370 conduits and everything that you can unlock with all that score so it's it's good but it's looking really good it's like evenly spread out it's nice to see this because i think we've seen something similar with the past year list as well in the raid so it's kind of cool oh. that the balance seemingly uh, is uh, is being kept between the melee specs and we'll see how it turns out in a couple of weeks yeah, months yeah, yeah. The, the, this is, it's looking good but you know what else looks good our patrons each and every Same. patron is a beauty a legend a shining light over what we do over here we cannot be thankful and grateful Dude. enough for all of your support for the class guys tlfs the mocast podcast oh. all, 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 all on cooldown and all of that Thank cool you guys from the bottom of our heart for keep on supporting and you know being there. Um, it's I mean some some of you are not Patreons and maybe thought about it or pondered about it. This, this is not a requirement, but if you are interested, there's multiple tiers, multiple values. You can check it out in the down, description. Down below, there's the link. Yep, yep. this definitely uh, helps in these trying times, and uh, you will be supporting pretty much all the content that you see here, and we would be very grateful. Plus, you get to be a part of the team. You might have access to some things that other people don't, like Patreon talks monthly and bloopers and stuff. Yeah, and wallpapers, uh, you know, with uh, your characters and stuff. Uh, there's there's a lot going on. Thank you for watching this week's it. TLF. We shall catch. You next week tomorrow with the stream. Is there a stream tomorrow? tomorrow? Yeah. We could be tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're gonna have an announcement. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's yeah. 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 Hello, bye bye. Weekend. Bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day. Let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure. So just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.